Hello and welcome to the flipping. Ah, welcome to the flipping or host and wholesale. What is it? Flipping and wholesaling. Flipping and wholesaling houses in New York. Show. I am Michael Pinter. Where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. So, I got a question for a guy who lives nearby. He said he's been doing virtual wholesaling in another state. Most deals have been tired landlords. What types of sellers do we have here? Maybe I should change the name of this thing. Um, what types of sellers? So I have narrowed it down really to four issues. There are four issues that um, would make a seller sell a property at a discount. Really, there's four. I, I, if there's more, I'm missing it, but really four. So these are the four issues that if a seller expresses, make them a possibility, you can buy them at a deep enough discount that you can make money on it. Okay. The first is condition issues, right? So obviously if the property is a disaster, or even if the, the seller just perceives their property a disaster, I've had people tell me their, their property is a disaster, I went in and it was not bad. Sometimes it's old, but it's really surface stuff. But serious condition issue means that it's unmortgageable, right? So if there's a hole in the roof, if the kitchen doesn't work, if the bathrooms don't work, person can't really sell it to an ordinary standard person who's going to move in, a, a user, an end user buyer is going to move in because they can't get a mortgage on it. Sometimes it's not that. Sometimes it's just that they're embarrassed, right? So I bought properties from hoarders who really were just embarrassed about the condition. I bought properties with human feces everywhere. I bought properties with animal feces everywhere. And sometimes... What's going on through the seller's head is that they just don't want to hear anybody say the words, how does anybody live like this? Right? And I bought houses where those words could have come out of anybody's mouth. I never say that, but so that's condition issues. Within condition issues, it can be just a perception from the seller. It can be really bad condition where no one can get a mortgage, or it can just be really bad condition where they don't want to have people coming through and looking at it. The second issue is a time issue, right? So that's what everybody thinks. Everybody thinks every seller they talk to is going to want to sell quickly. Um, but I bought more houses from people that wanted to sell slowly than I bought from houses bought from people who want to sell quickly. I have bought houses from people that really needed me to close quickly. Um, I remember one in Smithtown, lady was being relocated. I had to close in like a week. We got that done. Now. What people don't understand is that for a lot of sellers, it's just that they don't want to be on a buyer's timeline. So what I'm seeing a lot is people are moving south, they're building a house. Sometimes they're moving north. I have people building houses in Delaware, people building houses in the Carolinas. And the builders are not always so reliable with their prediction. And they feel like if they just sell it in a traditional way, the buyer's gonna make them close uh, the buyer's gonna make them close at some point and they may not be ready. So they come to somebody like me and they obviously know that they're getting less money. But for that peace of mind of knowing that they're in contract and they can, and then I'll wait for them. That's fine. I recently waited a year and a half for someone. Um, I'll wait. And that's one of the advantages that I bring. So a time issue can be on the short side and a time issue can be on the long side. My phone is buzzing like crazy. Okay. So there's condition issues and there's time issues on both sides. Another issue is municipal issues. This is a big issue uh, in Long Island. So that could be an unpermitted addition, unpermitted addition, which is very common here. People are concerned that the lender may, the lender or the buyer or the buyer's attorney can say, hey, you got this huge addition, you never got a permit for it, get a permit for it and then I'll buy it. Obviously that's something I can overlook. Open violations are a problem. Sometimes they can't be closed easily. Open building permits, sometimes from 50 or 60 years ago, could be a problem because they lead to other things. Oh, crud. Okay. Um, so it's important to understand that any of those issues can lead to somebody selling at a discount. And the fourth issue that I'm seeing a lot of over the last couple of years is tenant issues. So the most obvious case is you have a tenant who's not paying and you and you can't get them out. That's common. I bought a lot of properties like that. What I've also had a lot of issues is tenants who the owner knows and who does not want to evict. Sometimes because they're, fam they're family, sometimes because they're friends. 
and they just don't want to do it. And they feel, and I've, I've done this many times, that if they sell it, they're not going to be the bad guy. That happens too. And that's interesting, isn't it? But I have found, if someone doesn't have a condition issue, so the property's in great condition, if somebody doesn't have a time issue, they have, they're in no rush, and they don't have any back-end issues, if they don't have a municipal issue, no open permits or violations that they know about, and there's no tenant issues, right? They live in there or it's vacant. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to solve their problem, right? And people new in this business who sort of look at this as well, where I'm, I'm going to try and steal this house, it doesn't doesn't seem to make sense, right? Um, but here's the truth. If the seller doesn't have a problem that I can solve, I'm not going to buy the property. That's fine. And I go into people and I tell them all the time. That I say those words to people all the time. Listen, if you, if you don't have a problem that me that I can solve by buying the property at a discount, you should sell the property for top dollar, right? I have literally said over a hundred times, maybe hundreds of times, listen, I'll give you an offer, but I highly recommend you don't sell it to me. And they look at me like I'm out of my mind. And I go, you should list the property. The property is, can go for a lot more than I'll pay if you want, I'll list it for you, right? I do take listings. And I'll tell you why you might want to list with me. And I pitched them on why they want to list with me. But, right, so let's let's unpack that a little. On some level, right, if you're an investor, you may think what I said is crazy, right? Why would I? Now, I make a lot more money when I buy a property than when I list the property, right? Why would I tell them not to buy? And here's the answer. Because after doing this really full-time for 10 years, the idea that someone is not going to get in touch with any realtor to find out what they can get for their property is ludicrous to me. Everyone's going to figure that out. Now, if they have one of the four issues I said before, again, condition, time, municipal, or tenant, then they really don't have or may not have the option of listing it. But if they don't have those issues, they're probably going to list it. Now, I've gone to people dozens of times and said you should list it and they've told me no i need to sell it to you i you know they, they weren't telling me the truth before that happens a lot where they one of those issues is really there and they don't say i bought a property once in merrick where it was a good the property looked in good shape she was a doctor he was a lawyer no reason i thought listen this is a listing and they go no we only want uh we only want a buy it now discount price i made the price i bought it it needed some work they thought the work was really going to be expensive <laughs> they didn't want to get into it and for that they sold it at a discount to me and it was fine they were happy i was happy everyone was happy so i've gone to appointments thinking i was gonna it was gonna be a listing and ended up buying it and i've gone to appointments thinking i was gonna buy it and ended up listing it that happens all the time that's one of the beauties of doing both right in my opinion and i've said this on a lot of videos if you're not a, a licensed agent and you're doing this you are really throwing money out the window Right. If you're going to go on enough appointments, that in theory you could qualify or disqualify anybody who wants full price. But a lot of people want full price and end up selling it much less. I think it's a foolish way to be. So I think everybody should be licensed, and I think everybody should offer both both those things. Right? And 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 the idea to me, it's a ludicrous idea. There's a lot of ludicrous ideas going around the internet that oh, you are not doing your fiduciary duty if you're a licensed agent because you're going to. Just buy that property for so much cheaper when they can list it it's it's never it's never flip a coin right if you have real issues you're going to sell it at a discount that's what you want to do if not you're going to list it and make as much money as possible everybody should make as much money as possible nothing wrong with that right and i tell people all the time if you were my brother or you were my sister i would tell you to list the property i go i'll give you an offer you're going to not like it and you shouldn't take it right and so again sometimes they do take it Sometimes they say, listen, I don't want to wait. Or sometimes it's just a bad experience. They had a bad experience with a realtor. They had a bad experience with a buyer. They were in contract with a buyer. The buyer jerked them over for months and then came out and they go, I don't want that, right? I want the certainty that selling to you provides because I have no contingencies in my contract. So sometimes you get that. But I try to do whatever is in the, in the seller's best interest. If it's To me, it's almost stupid not to, right? It's almost stupid not to. So those are the kind of people I sell to, right? Condition issues, time issues, municipal issues, or tenant issues. I think everything falls into those categories. If they don't have any of those issues, they're probably going to list it. Hopefully with me, I'll go on the appointment and pitch them why, or with somebody else. But they're not going to sell it at a discount because they don't need to. I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflip.com. 
newyork.com. If you're interested in finding out more about one-on-one coaching, go to coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. I do offer a course. People have been buying it lately that teaches how to do what I do. It's uh, howtoflipnewyorkcourse.com. I think I'm changing that whole thing up, but I'm talking about it. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any media channel, please click the thumbs up. A lot more people have seen my videos lately, and I appreciate that. That's because people are liking it, and the algorithms sh- show it to more people, and more people like it. So please keep liking my videos, um, and please keep the comments coming. I post five times a week. I really don't always know what to say. Um, your comments give me ideas. Uh, you can ask any comment. It does not have to be about the video you're watching. I will try to get back to comments within a day or two. Um, if it's something simple, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something that I've covered recently, I'll send you links to a video or videos on it. And if it's something new, I will do a brand new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching.